Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 release and Shutter exclusive and is coming to Shutter on Thursday, February 11th after midnight. This is an independent film and when you watch it, you know it's independent. It has that independent feel. It has that independent look. It is low budget, but I think this is definitely one of the ones you don't want to miss. There are, there are a decent amount that I talk about that I'm like, they're good, but there aren't a ton that I'm like, don't miss this. So do not miss this one. It's... Well, you'll see why. This is a no-spoiler review since it's going up before the film is even on Shutter, and just because it's a newer film. So, no spoilers in this, except maybe a little bit kind of like underlying theme-wise. But watch it regardless. Uh, this is directed by Jeremy Gardner, uh, who also directed films T Tex Montana, Will Survive, and The Battery. Um, I've heard about The Battery. I haven't seen that yet. I haven't heard about the Tex one. Uh, and also directed by Christian Stella, who also did directing on Tex Montana Will Survive. It was written by Gardner himself, uh, who also, he also wrote scripts for The Battery, as well as a film called The Bags. A lot of the stuff to it. So, uh, like I said, comes on thir comes to Shutter on Thursday, uh, February 11th. So, quick synopsis, very bare bones on this, because I don't want to give too much away. It's about a guy whose wife takes a departure from him. Wife slash girlfriend, actually. I'm not 100% sure on that, but she takes a departure from him. Uh, and when she's gone, something keeps coming at night to try and get into the house. It's this creature. So that's all I want to say. Does it sound intriguing? It is intriguing. Is it a good film? Yes, it is. It's a good film. Definitely check it out. Uh, there's a very drastic shift in the very beginning of this film that takes you from kind of relative boredom, actually, to something pretty strong in interest, and that is this kind of, what I was saying, you know, the, this creature that comes at night and everything. Um, it's a little bit long in the beginning and, and very kind of, you know, low energy because of the, the ground that has to be laid in order to, you know, get to the more interesting stuff in the story, but it doesn't last too long. So initially I was kind of like, eh, where, like, this is going a little bit long, but then boom, it happens. And then it's like, okay, now I'm interested. Because the big thing is I'm used to a lot of films, especially Shutter exclusives and originals lately, starting with something that grabs you, like immediately, and then kind of backing down and getting a little bit slower and giving a little more backstory. This is a little different, you know, it kind of lays down a little bit of backstory and then it grabs you real quick. It doesn't wait too long, but it's just different for what I'm used to. Uh, there's some actually some camera work in this film that's, a, that's relatively unstable and unnecessarily so. Gives a little bit of that kind of moving on a boat feel at times. So I don't like that. That's one of my small criticisms. It's not consistent, though. It's just here and there, and you do notice it, in my opinion. So just a little thing that, that uh, you know, kind of bothers me a little bit. Uh, there's a bit of a problem with the audio level as well, having to do with dialogue. Uh, it, it's... It's interesting because it happens mainly in the beginning of the film, and then it gets much better, and then it happens a little bit towards the end again, and then it gets better again. So you'll notice it, and it's these moments where, like, level's fine, level's fine, and then you can, you can barely hear what's being said. And then that also sets up a situation where, you know, the dialogue's at a certain level, and then the music kicks in, and then the music's at a much higher level. So kind of some audio issues for that reason, um, but... It does not destroy the movie whatsoever. There's a comedic aspect that ends up emerging in this film uh, on the relatively early end, which I didn't see that coming. Uh, I, I think it was great. I love, I love that that was thrown in there. I think it gave it this kind of air of being kind of light and fun, and it kind of sticks throughout. And then it starts to feel like kind of a quirky type film at the same time. So like light, fun, quirky, these are great things. These are things I definitely want to get out of interesting horror films nowadays, especially independent ones, because when it's low budget, you can't go big on practical effects. You can't go big on, you know, kill scenes. You can't go big on a lot of things, but what can you go big on? Fun, keeping it light, comedy, good acting, you know, stuff like that. So I appreciate that. And there's some stuff in this that is legitimately funny. I actually watched it by myself, and I definitely laughed. And, and that says a lot, because for me to laugh when I'm by myself actually takes a good deal. 
there are a bunch of cool cuts from something kind of nice and relaxing and more of like low key. And then all of a sudden it goes to something a little bit more tense. Uh, these types of cuts work really, really well. Um, they kind of struck me every time they happened. I was like, that was a really good transition to go from here to here. So really nice cuts. Uh, some of the editing is nice. Although I will say overall, I do think there are some scenes that probably should have been edited down a little bit. This is a little bit under an hour and a half, but I still think it should have been edited down maybe a little bit more. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of those types of scenes, obviously without spoilers. But yeah, soundtrack, really good soundtrack. Uh, the music in this is not only good music that's used, but it's used really well. It's matched up to the mood well, it's matched up to the scene well, the acting well. And one of the other things about the music in this is a lot of the pieces of music that have lyrics are actually something to say about the actual story going on here and the characters going on. So pay attention to that as well. It's not just for mood, it's telling you something as well. And that goes all the way through to the, you know, the title or the end credit song as well. So I think that Jeremy Gardner, who plays the character Hank, did a nice job with his acting with this. Uh, also, Berea Grant, who has a pretty significant role in this, I've always enjoyed her work. She does quite a good job. In particular, she has this one scene, and I won't tell you exactly what it is, but you know what I'm talking about if you kind of follow me on this. There's a scene where she needs to fit, act without saying anything in particular, but act with her face, like show expressions, show emotion, show something going on in her head while there's something else going on and it needs to kind of contradict what's actually going on. And when she does this, I felt it was so convincing that I was really impressed with that. And like I said, you know, I've liked her work before, so I knew she was a good actress, but that moment in particular, I was just like, that's hard. Like that takes a lot of work and that is not easy. So Bravo on that. And like I said, Jeremy Gardner did a really good job with the acting. Um, he brings a, a nice comedy, a nice light element to his actual character. And yeah, I think he obviously connects with the material that was written partially because he wrote it. So that's awesome. And then also I need to shout out Henry Zabrowski, who plays a character of Wade. Holy crap, this guy is hilarious. His line delivery is great. Not only that, but the way the character's written and that character's dialogue in particular. So that goes back to, you know, Gardner's good writing with the script. But Zabrowski, I wanted more of him in the film. Like, he has a decent amount in the film, but I just wanted more of him because he was so funny. And like I said, that's partially how the character's written and the dialogue, but the way he played that character, his line delivery... Just great. Like, so those were some of the funniest and, and most fun moments of the film are when he was involved. Uh, there are some scenes that are a bit overly long. Now, this is what I was talking about with the editing uh, that I think just kind of needed edited down a little bit. Uh, part of that being there are flashbacks in the film, which are necessary. I don't think they all should be cut out, but there, I think it gets to be a little bit too much at one point where they're kind of doing too many of the flashbacks. A bunch of them are very important and they have significance and you'll find that out in the end of the film, but there's like one or two that I think didn't really have that much that much significance. They were just trying to hammer something home that I feel like was already hammered home. So they could have cut those out and probably should have because it kind of got to be a little too much. Uh, you felt like you were getting beaten over the head a little bit by, by this one aspect of the film. Um, when they just didn't need it at that point and they should have cut it down because some of those scenes just become a little bit too long. There's also another scene where two of the characters are kind of having a long conversation. And I think that conversation, while it is important, very important for the film, also a bit too long. I think somehow they should have cut that down a little bit, be a little more choosy with the actual dialogue they were using at that point. But it does have good impact overall. So I'm just saying for like flow of the film, it was a little bit of a disruption. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. There's a character performance at a known sappy song. I'm oh, sorry if you hear people yelling, unfortunately, uh, living in a townhouse. Uh, there's a character performance of a known sappy song in this film uh, by, a, what, what I say is character performance, a character performs a sappy song, like does a karaoke type thing. And some people I think are not going to like it because they'll be like, oh, it's too much. It's over the top. But I think it fits in with the kind of fun element. 
the quirky element, the light element, the comedy element. But um, also, I just love the song. I'm a fan of it. And I think that the way it's integrated works really well because it actually serves two purposes. And if you've seen it when you're watching this review, you know what I'm talking about. It serves two purposes. It serves a purpose of the actual lyrics of it, but it also serves a purpose as far as viewer attention for a certain reason. And once again, if you've seen it and you're watching this, you know what I'm talking about. So I like the integration of it. And there's a very nice surprise in the end of this film. There's a good twist to it that I really did enjoy. Uh, it makes the film even more meaningful, more interesting and cool, and just a great moment. And, and probably will end up being that little twist surprise will probably end up being some people's favorite part of the film. Uh, it might be my favorite. I just, in general, like the film, though. So, uh, my last thought on this film. Uh, this film touches on a lot of issues and anxieties about relationships and how they end up uh, changing with age. Not only f your physical age, but the age of the actual relationship. And, uh, and the monster in this film is a solid metaphor that relates to an aspect of ourselves. As in, each of us in relationships... It's very relatable. If you've ever been in a relationship or you are in a relationship, especially if you've been in any that last for a decent amount of time or you're married at the moment and it's been some years and, you know, this stuff resonates. Um, there, are, there are a lot of people who see this film who have been through similar stuff so they can relate. So just know that the creature aspect ties in and you'll see what I'm talking about. And hopefully you get kind of the metaphor going on there, which I enjoyed. I thought it was well done. And overall, a uh, pretty solid, well-pulled-off film. And like I said, this is one not to miss when it comes to Shutter exclusives and originals. So make sure you see it. And tell your friends, too. Because I like to support... we got to support these more independent ones. Oh, also, um, Gardner. Jeremy Gardner. He looked kind of familiar to me in this. And I was like, where have I seen him before? He's done some acting. He was in the film Bliss, which is also on Shutter, And Spring, which I think is the one on... No, I don't think it's on Netflix anymore. It was at one point, I believe. But anyway, he's an actor as well. So you might see him and be like, he looks pretty familiar. So that's why. But anyway, uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give this a very solid three and a half star rating. I was between three and a half and four. And I think with some of the issues like the audio, some of the pacing, some of the, you know, scenes should have been cut down a little bit and... Uh, the shaky camera stuff. I think it's more on the three and a half, uh, but I consider it a four. So know that if I did quarters, I'd definitely do a 3.75, but three and a half stars for me. Definitely check this one out. Um, and also put some comments down here. When you've seen it, or if you've already seen it, go ahead and put some comments down there. We can talk about it, your thoughts on the film, what you saw in it metaphorically, thematically, all that stuff. So go ahead, spoilers, all good in the comments. Uh, do me a quick favor, though, uh, hit that subscribe button because that is your best way to repay me for liking any videos, this video or any other video I've ever done. I don't make money doing this or anything. I'm just doing this to build a nerdy horror community, and I appreciate your help by joining that community by subscribing. So that would be great. Also hit the notification bell button. That way you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, whether it's a review like this or an unboxing or a haul video or any of the random other horror-related stuff I put up. But regardless, I thank you for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.